Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today um, for today's coffee house and webinar to share in bottom up peace building and unbuilding the structures of violence while celebrating the completion of the grassroots peace building course offered here at the Cody. So, my name is Sydney Anthony, and I will be co hosting this event um, with Jesse Humphreys. We've been working as peace building interns. Um, for the Cody, um, specifically working with Degaffi. So on this same note, I would like to start off by offering a land acknowledgement, acknowledging that we are in Mi'kma'ki, um, where the Cody is located, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. This territory is covered by the Treaties of Peace and Friendship, which Mi'kmaq and Wolaskowik people first signed with the British Crown in 1725. The treaties did not deal with this surrender of lands and resources, but in fact recognized Mi'kmaq and Wolaskiewicz title and established the rules for what was to be an ongoing relationship between nations. However, the treatment of Indigenous communities in our country since these treaties of friendship have come to fruition have not always reflected such peaceful intentions. Canada's legacy of settler colonialism and violence against Indigenous people calls for efforts of personal and institutional reconciliation and justice. With that being said, we are here today to talk about bottom-up peace building and unbuilding the structures of violence. As educators, students, community members, and lifelong learners, it is important to not neglect the parts of our history that still impact us all today. The past is still very much with us and the consequences of violence and colonization are still manifested today in many indig indigenous communities, both locally and across the world. We are here today to talk about peace, which pertains not only to the absence of violence, but also includes fostering an environment that encourage, encourages economic justice, racial equity, religious and political freedom and autonomy, over factors that allow us internal and external harmony. So I challenge us all today to go beyond simply acknowledging that we are still in fact in the ancestral unceded land of the Mi'kmaq people and ask, sir, ask ourselves what we can do with the privilege we have to make measurable changes in the ways we proceed after today. Whether it be improving awareness of our personal biases making a conscious effort to better understand the culture and views that exist here before us, or educating ourselves on the history of violence and oppression to be better equipped to stand for a future of peace. All right, thank you, Sydney. Thank you. Uh, I can begin the celebration by uh, with some words from the director of programs, Martha Vanjoy. Uh, Martha's been has more than 15 years of experience in applied research, teaching, and program development in both Canada and internationally. She brings perspective to the nonprofit and post secondary worlds to her work at Cody with experience in program design and delivery, research and policy, and leadership roles in both settings. Her research interests include the use of ethnographic, participatory, and co creative methods to explore belonging, community building, and placemaking, with a particular interest in forced migration. Her teaching interests include research methods, anthropological history and theory, human rights, and community development. And we're going to pass it off to Martha now. Thank you very much. Um, that, uh, I wasn't expecting such an, lot, uh, such an introduction. This might be one of those cases where remarks are shorter than the, uh, than the speaker's bio. Um, but thank you for that. Um, just want to welcome everyone here today, and in particular, I really want to welcome the students who just completed the grassroots peace building course who are with us, I think some in person and some online and are going to be sharing um, from, you know, some of their experiences today um, and, and, you know, really giving us the chance to learn from you um, and, and, and hear about some of the, the conversations and the sharing you've done over the past few months. Um, you know, in particular, because it was, you know, I really want to recognize your commitment and dedication because it was in an online space, which sometimes we were still adjusting to a little bit, even though, you know, we really, I think all in the past few years, taking some deep dives into online learning, you know, peace building, um, you know, at its core really involves relationship 
uh, you know, relationship building and, and that's sometimes not as easy or not as natural uh, in a virtual or an online space. And um, from what I've heard from the grassroots peace building force, and I think what we're going to hear today, um, a lot of that really deep relationship building and most deep conversations around grassroots peace building and conflict transformation really happened uh, over the last few months in the course. And uh, I commend you all for being part of that conversation, that discussion, and sharing it with us today. Um, and, you know, Vidafi also asked me to uh, say a small word of thanks to um, some, some other really uh, uh, important uh, people when we think about the, the web of relations we all belong to when it comes to peace building, and that's the Congregation of the Sisters of St. Martha. Uh, and, you know, just as I was um, kind of thinking about this webinar today, uh, when I had a few moments this morning, uh, I was thinking, kind of what a nice combination to be asked to give remarks, thanking the participants from the Grassroots Peace Building course, as well as the sisters. Uh, because in some ways, you know, recognizing today a group of, for some, you know, who were participating in the class, maybe uh, lifelong or, or uh, in like the sisters, um, you know, a deep history and deep roots in peace building work. Uh, and in particular in grassroots peace building work, but also with people who are finishing up the grassroots peace building course, some emerging peace builders um, and people who might be stepping, uh, you know, with a little bit more kind of, uh, you know, gentle steps uh, or with some newness into the conversation and some of the thinking around grassroots peace building. So in a lot of ways, a nice kind of coming together uh, today when we talk about bottom up peace building of thinking about new and emerging conversations, peace building and conflict transformation, new faces, new ideas, new perspectives, uh, and also kind of merging and connecting in and celebrating, you know, the history of uh, a group of very um, strong, powerful women who've been very deeply involved in peace building, um, you know, throughout the region here and deeply connected with peace building at Kony. So I, that struck me this morning when I was having my coffee that was definitely not as tasty as the coffee we're going to have here. Uh, yeah. um, that I felt very um, grateful to be asked to uh, recognize the emerging peace builders in the grassroots peace building class and also share some thanks um, for the uh, Congregation of Sisters uh, St. Martha for their long standing and ongoing work in peace building. Uh, I think, Nagafi, you have something you wanted to yeah. at the end to yeah. add, and Nagafi is going to add to that recognition at the end. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Thank you so much, Martha, for sharing that. Um, we will now be showing a short video shared by one of the grassroots peace building students who recently completed the course, who um, has and is currently completing amazing work peace building. Um, addressing inequities around the world, Shanir and Zawakiki, uh, has been a truly inspiring leader to work with throughout the course and is someone I feel very lucky to have met throughout this experience and that I can now consider a friend. So I'll share this short video that she's shared with us. This course benefited me in several ways, especially on the area of strategic networking. Oh, whoops. Yeah. I think I said Hi, my name is Chinya Rezumoki. I am from Nigeria, Sub-Saharan Africa. I choose to take the grassroots peace building course to gain more insight on how peace building works in the global level, to network with other like-minded peace builders, and most especially to acquire international certification in peace building. This course benefited me in several ways especially on the area of strategic networking. As the founder of Tomorrow's Women Development Organization, TWDO, I have participated in grassroots peace building, both in the grassroots and the nat national level in Nigeria. I have also participated in the International Federation of Peace Building in New York, USA. I want to thank the Cody Institute for giving me the opportunity to study peace building at the international level. 
I will step down this training to other women who may not have the opportunity to acquire this course like I did. I have been doing it and I will continue doing it. God bless you, Judas. <laughs> well, that was great. We're so happy that some of the participants agreed to send us some videos. It was really great to see some people who weren't able to attend. Uh, or be speakers for us, but we're going to be having some of our other participants as speakers, and they'll be explaining how grassroots peace building course has facilitated and built international relationships among the members and along with their personal peace building endeavors and initiatives. We're going to be starting off with Wendy, who's currently working with peace building on the ground in Mozambique, and she'll be speaking from her experience. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Um, so thank you for giving me this opportunity to address my experience, uh, but I would like to say that I was born in Mozambique, but um, with my mom's work, it allowed me to travel to different places in the world and live in different places in the world. So I consider myself an international person, someone that has been able to live in different cultures and different areas. Um, so Mozambique is a country that I think has had war and I, I view war in Mozambique like a virus, a virus that it becomes dormant. And then at times when something goes wrong, it becomes, it awakes and it attacks. And in the case of Mozambique, we've had three wars or three struggles. The first one was the liberation struggle that started in 1964 to 1975. Shortly after that, in 1977 to 1992, we had a civil war. And the peace building process, it didn't go as planned or it didn't go as people thought it would. And it left a lot of unaddressed issues, a lot of um, things that still needed to be uh, closed off, which led to a third conflict that went from 2015 to 2017 and yet again the same thing happened and currently we are in another armed conflict which has been deepened by the social and economic inequalities that we have in Mozambique. My professional journey has been primarily um, around gender and social injustice in livelihood uh, development. However, uh, late last year, uh, we were presented with the opportunity to contribute in a project that aims at fostering peace and stability in the northern part of Mozambique. Um, and this initiative prioritizes a unique approach, engaging diverse stakeholders to implement peace building interactions that create dialogue of the root causes of the conflict. And it's led by the community members and their grassroots um, organizations. Uh, at this point, we started to recognize as a team that I work with that none of us have the experience in working um, in peace building strategies or gender in peace building. So I seized the opportunity to enroll in the Cody grassroots peace building course. And I believe that this was the most perfect opportunity for me because I value uh, experimental learning where the theoretical knowledge uh, interacts with the on, on ground realities. And having the course that provides transformative and offers practical tools and insights that resonate so deeply with the project objectives, not just with the project objectives, but with what I believe that peace building should be as well. And one of the tools that we learned during the course was the conflict of tree. Uh, and with this conflict, um, sorry, tree conflict, and we used this tool and we adapted it to the context that we we're working with. And the participants decided that they didn't want to call it the tree of conflict, but yet the tree of peace. Because even though we were analyzing conflict and discussing about conflict and its problems, its uh, root causes, the main priority of the conversation we were having was for the people it, that we're working with the community members for them to assume a leadership role in crafting solutions, emphasizing the vital role of inclusivity and empowerment in sustainable peace building projects that they are going to create. So we used this tree to create also a discussion of peace. Um, like I mentioned that Mozambique is currently in a conflict and I am working in this area. Um, although I have worked in the north of Mozambique, but with livelihood, this is the first time that I'm working specifically with a project that is dealing with peace building. 
I have become more aware about the importance of having community members being part of the solution and them leading that dialogue for peace. For they're the ones that are living in the situation of armed conflict, and they're the ones that are with the scars of the armed conflict. They are the ones that are craving peace and normality. Although we are very aware that normality won't be the same thing that it was four or five years ago, they will have to live with a new reality, but they can live with this new reality by transforming their lives and creating peace from the grassroots uh, level. Um, and it, we also become very aware that just because we are dealing with uh, armed conflict, it doesn't mean by the end of the armed conflict, all the conflicts will be ended. And by discussing this with the community members that we've been working on, we became very aware that just because the absence of armed conflict is gone, it isn't there anymore, doesn't mean that there won't be other issues that could that create conflict and don't allow people to be at peace. So things such as ethnic and religious disputes, gender-based violence, including sexual assault, which is something that is very frequent, uh, frequently happening, gender and social inequalities, early marriages and early pregnancies, and many other issues that uh, do arise during community that doesn't allow someone to feel at peace, that doesn't allow a family to be at peace, and it doesn't allow the community as a whole to be at peace. So also addressing those issues and creating uh, peaceful initiatives that also are looking at those problems is something that we are working towards. Everything that I've mentioned so far is something that I've been able to see uh, working with uh, at the community level. But I also appreciate Cody Institute and the Grassroots Peace Building um, course because it has given me an academic perspective that is not only influenced by Cody and the literature and the Gaffey, but also the impact my classmates have made by their contributions and insights when we have been discussing conflicts and peace building. In our learning trajectory, it become evident that Cody Institute fosters the spirit of sharing by everyone being able to ask questions, deliberate, provoke curiosities, share life experiences from different corners of the world and having people on the course that are living in countries where conflict is a permanent residence, gave the space to everyone to come in, uh, in with their insights and experiences. From what I learned on my journey at Cody is that we as peace builders must be conscious of our surroundings, be aware of the cultural differences, involve the influential people in the community, have the community as a resource, and most importantly, be empathetic of the people we're working with. I would like to give a very special thank you to Dagafi for sowing a seed of peace build champion in me and in my classmates. I would also like to thank my classmates for sharing their experiences. And lastly, but not least, I'm grateful for Cody Institute for having a course such as this one that allows reflection and positive inquiry, and most importantly, knowledge. To my colleagues, thank you. And let's take the seed, let's take the seed of peace building and make a peace building forest around the world. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Wendy. That was really insightful. And hearing from you today and throughout the course has just been such a privilege. And it's really been amazing to hear about your experiences, peace building, um, and incredible reflections and course contributions. Um, so thank you for that. Um, we're going to now hear from another student that has completed the grassroots peace building course, um, Mandef Rowe, who is also engaged in peace building initiatives um, in Ethiopia. Mandef Rowe is also a leader and someone who's doing very transformative work and has been someone um, who I've also had the privilege of learning valuable insights from throughout this course and has sh shared amazing personal experiences working in peace building. Um, so I'll hand it over to Mandefro now. I would like to thank all the Cody Institute crew and specifically after the Kapi who have been taking us through uh, this peace building grassroots, peace building course. Uh, my name is uh, Mandefro from Ethiopia and I would like to go through the insight from what we have learned in the grassroots peace building uh, framework. Uh, as you all know, you know the topic peace is become an agenda for, for, for 
the world that we are living in. Because everywhere these days we are hearing, you know, the instability, the violent conflict, war, you know, between countries, between different, you know, uh, in some cases, you know, the communities within the countries. For example, in Ethiopia, I am now 40 years old. Since my childhood, I have been hearing the conflict and instability in different uh, parts of you know, the, the countries. So it becomes war and instability is become you know, uh, our culture, you know, our identity. So it claims you know, in, in hundred thousands lives of you know the, the, the specific and the poor peoples. You know this instability and war is on top of you know, the shock we are striving with, specifically, you know, the climate change, you know, the, this is our threat these days, you know, this situation is worse and worse in the developing country, like the country Ethiopia and majority of the African countries. Yes, unfortunately, the poverty we live in make us dependent on eggs from the Western and we are still dependent on the philosophy of the Western, which is specifically you know, the hegemonic ideology. As a result, so far it doesn't work, you know, the poor remain poor and the conflict remain worse and worse. The last decade, we are in conflict, in a violent conflict situations in relation with, you know, the power, the power struggle between few and individuals, the politicians, the limited resource we have, and, you know, the influence and the interest of individuals you know, taking those power. So, this is the context we are in here in a really the training opportunity we, 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 we got, you know, it's organized by Cody and specifically Cody Gaku have been leading us through this grassroots peace building process, which was really an eye opening for us, specifically professional like me who are working with a different organization to address, you know, the instability, the conflict practically, and currently we are facing in. And so I can say this training was finally that helped us to look inwards what we have, what the value we have, what the norms we have, you know, which which is non hegemonic and non polarized. And again, it is respected by the communities, the innocent ones specifically, the people who live in the poverty, who are innocent, who have nothing to do with, you know, the game of the politicians. So the grassroots, you know, and thinking is very crucial. And this is time we need to think of, you know, those grassroots elements. You know, these poor people, specifically the people in general in the developing country, when we go to the community level, you know, the people have a culture, even not killing animals, not cutting trees, just forget it. Killing peoples, you know, this thing is a taboo, a taboo for this community. It's, you know, for example, I can raise an example from Ethiopia. A person may die while he has a livestock, an animal. You know, he preferred to die as a zan, you know, slaughtering his animals, specifically, if 
if if this individual is in a fasting season, you know, majority of our community are Christians. You know, this level, you know, frequency or respecting even the animals in some areas, if you go, cutting trees is a power. But now, it is because of few individuals, the elite groups, you know, we are understanding people start to kill each other. This is because, you know, the demonic thinking and we need to back to our own traditions, values, morals. You know, if we are supposed to restore peace, we need to look into what we have. We need to start with, you know, the resources, the capacity, the knowledge from within that are expecting from external. So the training in general, you know, give us such insight to move forward and engage in the peace building process, which need to be started from the grassroots level. You know, as I've said, those old opportunities we have as I said, those opportunities we had, you know, ignored due to a reason mentioned before which is related with the government thinking, the few individuals in the political realms, and the government structures. So the training was a kind of ringing the bell, specifically the African countries. And it's calling back to what we have at the grassroots. Those who, you know, Categorized as a useless, their contribution for the peace building should come, you know, at the front level to deal with, you know, to manage the the, the challenge currently, you know, this innocent community struggling with. So what coordination is a very important element because the challenge we are dealing with is a wicked problem, which is an adaptive problem. This is no technical problem. You know, that's why we are struggling with this instability for the last decades. So multi-stakeholder engagement is paramount. The skill to leave this, this peace building is very important. The skill that came from an institution like Cody and the people like from Digabu should be you know, part of this process, maybe from the level of you know, advocacy as the international platform in, in, in terms of you know, considering these grassroots peace building processes while you know, evaluating the, pro the process we have been going through through different Western organizations for the last decades. We need to have a pause and reflect session internationally. And again, we need to design you know, such kind of tools to, to, to bring stability and peace and justice for the world. So, in general, we need to reactivate, you know, the grassroots cultural peace-building processes, engaging the traditional structures. Partnership building with institutions, as I've said, uh, who have an, an excellence. Maybe Cody can think of, you know, engaging universities in developing countries in terms of, you know, uh, sharing, networking, you know, such kind of capacity building trainings. And again, to keep continuing 
such type of you know, short term trainings for those who are not yet you know, getting this opportunity. Actually, those who get this opportunity, like me, can cascade and share with the organization. We will do our best in terms of advocating you know, locally, nationally, uh, whatever is a platform we, 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 we have. But the international level, the national level kind of advocacy, integration coordination is a very important pillar that can support specifically you know, the countries like Ethiopia and other African countries. So again, I would like to thank for the opportunity uh, for the institution gave us, and specifically Afro the Gaffi to take us you know, this practical training. It was very interactive, practical, and it was very interesting. And again, the practical experience we have been hearing from the fellow student, it was very interesting, really, for the person like me who uh, working on the you know, peace building initiative, it was really fantastic and you know, practical. And it, it was very, as I said, I opening kind of you know initiative. Uh, so good to continue even for the fellow student or a graduate student to continue our relationship with coding to keep continue sharing our experience from what we have learned and maybe it helps us to build that on you know the practical experience we have from this training and from what we are also facing in, in the implementation process. And so I would like to ask you know, this partnership to continue with a fellow graduate student and to continue filling the gaps we, we, we have and ultimately uh, who knows this experience will be you know, supporting you know, uh, the, the countries, the peoples who are currently suffering in the uh, instability and the conflict, war, you know, children are suffering, women are suffering practically in Ethiopia. Currently, there is active war in the northern part of Ethiopia and different parts of uh, the, the country. So continuous monitoring, kind of busy communication, to be continued, uh, and, and if possible, even to give us an opportunity to have, you know, other level of uh, trainings that can further you know, uh, build our capacity, and in terms of you know, supporting our country, our nation, and even in institutions we are working with, and different academy in the country we have, and this is what can, can, can say, and uh, in general, I would like to thank all of the fellow students who have been sharing their experience. Again, uh, the time after the country have been sharing with us for the, for the, and taking us through this course. And, and also, I would like to thank Cody uh, Institute as an institution who gave us you know, this opportunity. And, and again, to uh, a team, uh, Sydney, Jamie, who have been facilitating this course, I would like to thank and uh, thank you all. All right, thank you, Mendefro. Your perspective today has been extremely insightful, and I think it's really emphasized the need for grassroots peace building. Um, we're going to be moving on to our next speaker. Um, it's Sarah Manakaba, a Canadian Pakistani educator and multi multidisciplinary artist. Her art bridges dance, poetry, spoken word, and singing, and she has a passion for using the arts for social change. Uh, funded by the Cody Institute and the Catholic Family Foundation, she is currently based in Pakistan and has founded AWAS, an initiative that is bringing mental health and performing arts programs across a network of slum schools and low income settings across Islamabad, Hamza, Chichal, and Karachi. She spearheaded Pakistan's first ramp program, empowering young female and male athletes, using sports as an avenue for women's empowerment, uh, mental health training, and positive youth development. 
So far, Sarah Maya has delivered the AWAS program for over 470 participants and educators across the country. Professionally, she's also served as a consultant for the Institute of Ismaili Stud uh, Studies Mental Health and Mental Health Curriculum and is a guest educator for both the Calvary Board of Education and Foundations for Future Charter Academy. She is also a TEDx speaker, a former fellow at the University of Central Asia, and has experience in education settings across Canada, Mexico, the UK, and Pakistan. Uh, very esteemed. So we'll pass that along to Sarah Maya. Um, thank you so much for, for giving this opportunity. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so Jagathi had asked me to speak a little bit about um, the peace building work that I'm involved in here in Pakistan. Um, and I think it's it's so lovely and enriching for me to hear um, from some of the wonderful speakers that we've heard from so far, because I think I'm operating in a very different domain. Um, so I'm getting to learn so much also. So my, um, the piece of the quote unquote, that I am involved in um, is at a much smaller scale. It's a very granular level. Um, and I like to say that my peace building, much like my resistance, is granular. Um, I, my work operates at the microcosms of society, right? Working with public school teachers, with mothers in low income settings and neighborhoods, um, and with kids who spend their afternoons begging on the streets after school. All of this to me um, is grassroots work, right? Is community level work. Peace building aims to unravel the structures that perpetuate um, violence and instead construct new structures of hope and of dialogue. When the ability to speak openly about our struggles um, and our feelings is taken away from us, and then is not just stigmatized, but is also ridiculed, then I don't think we can claim to live in a society of peace. We're constantly in conversation with the social architecture around us. And so this is uh, norms and values and practices, rituals, policies. Um, and when we are unable to operate from a position of authenticity um, and our interactions are then tainted with fear and defensiveness and despair. Right? So the way that we shape the, the social architecture around us, um, it also shapes who we are. And so I think it's important for us to see how we can start to shape um, those norms and those practices into a way that allows us to really express what it is we're feeling and um, to be able to value all of the spectrum of emotions and feelings that someone goes through. I think also um, that peace building is relationship building. And so high suicide rates, particularly in some of the mountainous communities in Pakistan that I'm working with, are just a glaring testament uh, to the absence of spaces in which peace, and particularly peace of an intrinsic value, uh, sorry, an intrinsic nature are valued. The absence of uh, relationships and of reminders that life is worth living, I think leads to these really intense feelings of you know, despair um, and hopelessness that we have now come to associate with suicide. So peace building in the form of building building healthy relationships um, and crafting spaces in which people can you know lighten the burdens they walk around with um, and can find those spaces for genuine interaction with others um, is not just uh, a good thing to do for people. I think it's life saving work. Building relationships and building trust and building bridges of shared experience through thoughtful communication very much does save lives. But also on that note, um, I think crisis response isn't enough for peace. We have to start to resist, if not dismantle, the structures that perpetuate these feelings of hopelessness and of violence. And that work has to start from the ground up. It cannot be just imposed at a governmental level for us to expect that it'll realistically make a difference uh, for grassroots communities. So the mental health education and arts education work that I've been doing here in Pakistan responds to these internalized structures of violence at the micro community level. Working with mothers, for example, um, we've looked at the degree of expectations forced upon them in typical Pakistani families and then supported them in both decision making and communication of um, realistic expectations from themselves and for themselves. Um, we've talked about what mental signs of mental health challenges 
look like in their kids um, and how we can respond from a place of empathy and, and love and what an open culture looks like at the family level. With teachers, we've looked at how we can transform our classroom from a space of competition and pressure to a space of experimentation. Um, and particularly how we can monitor our students' well-being over extended periods of time. We've strategized with teachers and school heads and principals to see how we can adapt or modify um, structures that already exist at the school level and the school board level to make sure that somewhere students feel safe expressing their moments of doubt and of failure. I think again at the micro level, peace building and particularly in my work, really means working with people to uh, develop their capacity for dialogue and provide them with avenues and spaces for expression. The dialogue that we've been focusing on in my work relates to wellness, relates to mental health, to love and to hope. Today, we heard so eloquently from, from the speakers before um, that peace is more than just the absence of violence. It's the active existence and the protection of systems um, that allow for safety and security and just generally for lives. In my work with Avaz, peace as well as safety spans over multiple domains. It spans over physical, social, emotional, cultural, mental, um, creative, spiritual domains. And any one of these being compromised indicates an incomplete system of peace. Over the last eight months, I've had the privilege to make mistakes. And I think in all of the mistakes that I've made um, and through some of the successes, I've learned a few lessons about what grassroots peace building looks like. Um, and I'm hoping to share that through some pictures. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you and hopefully, <laughs> so essentially what I was hoping to do is kind of show you some of the lessons I learned through the pictures. So the first one is that grassroots peace building um, is not feeling, not fearing, sorry, failure. In fact, it's failing over and over and over again until something sticks and learning from that failure every single time. The tower that these kids are making in the picture that you see um, is a metaphor for a failure that we explored in some of the classes with them. The first day, um, those towers that they're making, almost all of them had fallen over as soon as they let go. Um, and it took multiple days, but eventually their tower stood. And I think that's um, very much a metaphor for, for some of the process-based work that we've spoken. You can move to the next slide for me. Uh, thank you. Grassroots peace building is joy. Um, joy is an expression of love. And when people feel joyful in a space, when they get the opportunity to, you know, be kids again, um, to engage in the arts, to laugh with each other, we create a starting point for genuine dialogue and conversation and openness. Um, joy is the antidote to fear. And when community members um, experience joy or even hear about it, I think you have this beautiful influx of people coming in. So even in this picture you see here, there's many students and in the background, there's mothers also sitting watching um, who had no previous exposure to the work that we were doing, but just decided to come and sit in and be a part of the dialogue that we were having. Um, grassroots peace building is inherently creative work. Um, I think, uh, so one of my favorite Urdu words is this term, uh, jugar. And jugar means, it doesn't really translate well into English, but it essentially means finding some sort of creative low resource solution uh, to fix a problem. So creativity in terms of peace building, I think, uh, means thinking outside the box and looking for solutions and new roads to new challenges. Um, so this could be physical structures, it could be decision making, um, but whatever it is, creativity is essential in challenging normativity, I think, and in ensuring um, sustainability. So this classroom, um, basically there was many things that went wrong and we didn't have a classroom for a couple of weeks. Um, and so there's a large wooden stick that's covered um, right now and held down by rocks. And then we had two tarps um, and this became our classroom for a couple of weeks to shelter us from the rain. Grassroots peace building is also heavy. Um, working alongside people who have fallen through the cracks of systems that are supposed to protect them means that you're working alongside hearts and minds 
that have seen so much sorrow and difficulty, it's impossible to fathom for me. And so stories of rape and abuse, neglect, lost childhoods, um, vicious cycles of poverty, are all of these things are brought into the spaces that we operate in. And um, all of these things have stories behind them, right? Each person has a story and deserves the dignity um, and the time to be able to tell their story. And so if you see um, the activity the kids are working on has to do with explaining the highest and lowest points of their life and thinking about um, who they are as whole selves and how they bring that into their spaces every day. Grassroots peace building is lateral. Um, I think it's the recognition that a whiteboard and a educator, quote unquote, or a facilitator, do not belong in the front of the class, right? They belong as part of the circle with students. And sometimes the role of the facilitator is to do nothing more than just describe. And so dismantling these top down approaches begins with the understanding that as a teacher, I do not know more. I just know different things. Um, and we learn from each other when the whiteboard is in the center of the class in which everyone can contribute and write on it. Grassroots peace building is humility. Um, it is the understanding that hand in hand with having a particular skill set is the ability and the uh, moral obligation, I think, to help others succeed with that skill set. So this is a picture of one of our participants in the Ringette program we ran. Um, she's lending her skates and tying them to another young girl who wasn't part of the program, who would just come to watch on the side. Um, and so I think this just demonstrates the humility of understanding that we are better when all of us can play. Um, and my success as a player does not depend on your success, or sorry, your failure as a player or as an MC. And so just really making sure that we're supporting those who are often left behind by the larger structures and systems is very much inherent part of peace building. And then my last one for you is that peace building is messy. Um, operating at the grassroots level means that, you know, we're often at the mercy of circumstance. We do not hold the power to manipulate structures around us to our convenience, as we do with top-down hegemonic forms of peace building. Uh, things that we could never have prepared for go wrong, right? Things like climate change, community conflict, sorry, conflict, landslides flat tires, um, elections, right? All of these things play a very significant role in uh, even our discussions of what peace looks like, let alone actually getting to peace building processes. Um, and so having to change plans and then change and change and change them again, I think is a very just fundamental part of operating at the grassroots peace building level. And so to end off, you can just, yeah, thank you. Um, I wasn't sure actually how to end and how to tie all of these loose threads in my head together. Um, and so I thought I would turn back to faith. And this is a peace prayer that I recite three times a day um, in the prayers that I have inherited. Um, and so I will read it to you in Arabic and in English. Which means, O oh Lord, you are the peace, and from you is the peace, and to you returns the peace. O oh Lord, give us a life of peace and usher us into the abode of peace. Um, thank you so much for your time, and uh, congratulations to the graduating class of the uh, Grassroots Peace Building Cohort. Thank you. Wow, that was incredible. Thank you so much, Sarah, for sharing that. That was really insightful, and it's interesting to kind of see that connection and see art as an avenue for peace at a micro level, but also just that emphasis of creativity on problem solving was really interesting to hear about. Um, so thank you so much for sharing. That was amazing. Um, so I guess we'll kind of start wrapping up a bit by just saying a final congratulations um, to the grassroots peace building students. Um, so Jeffrey Amoka, Mike Denny, Shinir Ozen Wakike, Mendefrod Sadiq, Abdul Samad Abrahimi, Wendy Lau, and Na Naima Mohammed. Um, congratulations to all of you. It was really a privilege to learn from you all in your personal experiences throughout the course. It just made it so much more valuable. Um, 
and it was really amazing to connect with all of you. So um, congratulations um, to all of you. And we'll also now give um, all the students the opportunity to contribute anything that they feel inclined. So we'll open the floor to you. Hello, good afternoon from Nigeria. My name is Chinyere Ezenwokike. Sydney, I want to thank you so much for all your efforts, for getting everybody along, for everything you do. And I hope you continue like this to grow, to be a very big role model. Sydney, I thank you. To all my classmates, I say congratulations. Congratulations for the work you do, for this class we had from January to this time. It is not easy because we live so much to participate. We live so much to make sure our voices are heard. And I want all of us to put what we have learned into practice by teaching others who have the privilege or not to learn or to come to Cody. To Cody Institute, I say, you are on top. We have already been exploding everything to the world. We've been making the world over to know that the institution is credible and is there to accept everyone and to reach out to people who are equally looking to learn and work in the area of peace building. I have learned so much, especially from friends. I have made a lot of friends, you know, coming there. It is not a, an opportunity to be wasted opportunity at all at all to be wasted, we are going to make actually proper use of it by making sure that everything I have learned so far will be replicated into the work I am doing in Nigeria. I thank you all and I pledge for peace. I pledge for peace world over. I pledge to be a peace builder anywhere I go. I pledge to represent the institution to the best of my ability. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you so much, Shanir. Um, does anyone else have any words they'd like to share? Hi, everyone. My name is Naima Muhammad. I was part of the, well, I was one of the participants of the, uh, the Peace Building Program. Um, it was uh, really wonderful. I made this wonderful table. I worked like, uh, uh, my group was like working on like the conflict in Mozambique, and it was like, Really so amazing talk someone with their Wendy, a uh, friend that I like wish to have, like I will continue to connect with her and uh, the other group members. Thank you so much. Uh, someone who was like that, he, like uh has like that contact with home because my part my family fled from Somalia and settled in Kenya and because of like civil war and stuff. So it was like really wonderful having Thing that I never knew why they happened. Now I have like an eye. I know it's like um, having like those like the uh, what we call the peace tree was like a conflict tree. I like drawing it. I have it in my room, so it was like really wonderful. So thank you uh, to Cody for having this. It's like really amazing. Like sometimes you know, like the things, you know, like the uh, the absence of peace, and then you don't know like how it happened what happened, how it like goes. But now like I, I really have the skills, I have like uh like direct uh eye on what's happening. Like I could like pop it in my head. Oh so this is how it happened. But it's like something deep. It's not like just people having uh segment or having conflict. It's like something that is like systematic, like someone built it and this is how it works. And you have like a, you don't have to agree with someone and then it's not like just like a personal, like individual. It's like someone built it, like something like a whole system behind this thing. Uh, this uh, so it was like really amazing having that uh, to understand that. And I like I appreciate everyone. I appreciate body. I appreciate uh, uh, the cafe who like really suggested the course to me, and my, all my other like my friends. Thank you so much for having like. It's both like amazing having like your ideas, someone who like really uh was involved in like peace building, someone who has like direct 
contact with like who's building the community. So having that eye and understanding everything was like like practical, like it was happening, it was like something. So we were not imagining and then build like we had a a peace building analysis and that we had to prepare. So we didn't use like something in fiction. We had like a, like something real that we know like it's happening and that's how we we like to solve and come up with solutions and look for the problem. So it was like really amazing. So thank you, Digabe. Thank you for Cody. Thank you everyone for having me in the course. Thank you so much for speaking. That was awesome. I'm really happy you got made a connection with Wendy also. She's really great too. And, okay, well, we're gonna move on to the question section now. So, Brian, if you could pull up some of the questions that we've had. Yeah, so the three questions are. I'll pass it to you to go up yeah. So, the gap there is just within the context of violence that exists in, is it the same context that we we're in when we are working towards peace? How do you hold the tension between peace and liberation for peace is often misconstrued? Say, say that again. It's the first top question there from the screen. Ah. Within the context of violence that we that can you can you put it back? <laughs> <laughs> Within the context of violence that we exist in, it is the same context that we are in when we are working towards peace. How do you hold the tension between peace and liberation where peace is often misconstrued as the absence of violence and violence is often considered to be precursor to liberation? This is a very philosophical question uh, and very complex question when we look at um, violence, peace, and conflict within the context of liberation, however we frame the term liberation. Liberation could be uh, uh, the desire or commitment to live in a constant um, uh, rebellion, uh, constant rebellion that search for justice, truth, uh, and, and freedom. So um, the tension between peace and liberation uh, is that we must understand peace within the context of not just the absence of war and violence, but a comprehensive peace that actually nurtures relationship, fosters relationship, and also looks into all the structural violence that is built in within a particular system. So when we're talking about peace, we have to look at peace at the three levels. One at the individual level, two at the family level, community level, national and international level, even beyond three. So what is our understanding of peace within? Let's take an example, for example, um, a thought. What, what are we thinking when we think about somebody offending us or somebody stepping on our toe? What is our thought process? Are we thinking a revenge or reaction or are we thinking how we can actually deconstruct that kind of thought and focus into building that relationship with fosters relationship and also fosters peace and peace in a sustainable way? So this is not just about there is no gun violence or there is no fighter jets flying over. It's about the tranquility of our internal thought and also the tranquility of our relationship with each other. And also a very important point here is that our relationship with the natural world. What kind of relationship do we have with the natural, with the environment, with the water, with the sea, uh, with the forest? All those kinds of things come into play when we are talking about a sustainable peace, peace that is rooted in relationship with each other as well as with the natural world. So it's a very, a very important question that we can go and explore a full seminar uh, about this particular question. And, and thank you for, for raising that issue. Any other questions? Let's go with the second one there. Or the coffee oh. event, uh, the coffee event peace building meeting is most important in the context of Bangladesh, particularly in the caste system and people living in coastal regions adjacent in Sunderland. So we want to, we want to need the concept idea and way toward key finding papers regarding the topic. 
I mean, the key findings for us uh, in, in the context of grassroots peace building is a creating a space where as um, Wendy said and as uh, uh, Maya said, is creating that safe space for communities to build the relationship. A relationship rooted in respect and dignity, to humanize each other, uh, to see uh, the other person, not as the other, as part of the whole uh, peace building system. So the priority for us is what kind of space, safe and respectful space creating created by each community individuals to have a dialogue, to have a conversation and to lift each other up, not to put uh, each other down. So what are you bringing to the table when we are talking about peace? It could be a cultural value, a spiritual exercise, norms, all those things contribute to a sustainable peace building with the context of the grassroots peace building. The, the challenge for us is uh, often when we talk about peace building or violence, uh, for example, we are talking as if that violence, lack of peace and war or violence is limited to certain communities, that they are doomed to, for war and violence to the end. But if we flip that issue and say, what kind of values, norms, and spiritual exercises do we have in that community to foster peace, then we can explore the avenue for sustainable peace building. But I think we have to challenge the stereotypical understanding of certain communities, certain countries, that they are doomed to uh, violence or they are inhabitable because uh, inherently there is violence there. So we, have, we, we challenge all those narratives and that preconceived ideas. And then, uh, as, as, as uh, Maya said earlier, we can provide that space and her definition of peace building. Uh, yes, peace building is messy, but out of that mess, we can build something else and we can put everything we have in the pot and make sure that uh, our contribution is fostering peace, not violence. So I think, I think that's one way uh, to answer your question. Uh, the next question is, how can grassroots initiative effectively contribute to bottom-up peace building efforts and dismantling of structure of perpetual violence? Peace building, let's, let's simply define it in two ways. One is relationship building, relationship building that is rooted in dignity and respect. The other is peace building is the deconstruction of the structures of violence and the construction of the structures of peace. So how do we deconstruct the structures of violence without being violent? That's the question we need to ask. What are our uh, thought processes when we're thinking about uh, deconstructing the structures of violence? Uh, how that activity, that initiative, actually, whatever we do on the ground as a peace building initiative, eventually will challenge the existing structures, the orthodoxies, the way we think, the way we do things. So building and expanding those peace building initiatives at a grassroots level. level and building that consciousness, a collective consciousness, and fostering that consciousness of a peaceful living, respect, mutual understanding, dialogue, all those kinds of things are valuable tools for us to use and to develop a mechanism that is actually respectful of a particular culture, a particular way of life in society, and also teasing out the values that exist within the society is a very important way of looking at your question. How is peace realized in different religious groups? I mean, when we talk about religious groups, let's just for a moment focus on the three Abrahamic religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. If you read and spend time reading the text of those three Abrahamic religions, they actually um, have certain context, certain text that actually values peace and provides some tools how to build peace within the religious context. I mean, when we, we, we hear about religion, usually the negative aspect of religion is more amplified than the potential positive values and positive texts and verses that exist uh, that help us build a relationship within a community and within interreligious relationship. So I think 
going back and using uh, religious tools uh, to build peace is an important point. Also, there are uh, particular uh, peace building courses that are focused on religion and peace building, which means we are teasing out the materials and the resources within religious text and religious values, how we can build peace for communities and between communities. Uh, and the last question we have here is, prevention is better than cure. As a grassroots peace building, we do not have to wait for violence before grassroots intervention in liberation to bring peace. To bring in peace, peace start with the community's participatory, so on and so forth. I, it, this, this question answers is, is question uh, itself. I mean, participatory community engagement and community empowerment is the key for peace building uh, around the world. And I am the one. I am one of that belief that sustainable peace is not going to come from big structures, big systems, big institutions. Sustainable peace only can be sustained when it's built from a grassroots level and built from bottom up and creates people's consciousness, people's relationship, and people's outlook, how they see violence and war within the social, economic, and political system. So uh, with that, uh, we come to an end of our Q&A session. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you who are joining us from the four corners of the world. Um, as you have heard already, uh, the topic of today's webinar, Coffee House, is bottom-up peace building and unbuilding the structures of violence. We are engaged in a discussion on a bottom-up peace building at a time when peace seems distant, unreachable, and even impossible. War, violence, and destruction appear to have the upper hand. The truth is, we are gathered here in communities around the world, not only to engage in an academic discussion of the importance of peace building or peace, but to work towards peace. To say peace is not an alternative, but the only path. Furthermore, to affirm our individual and collective responsibility to the well-being of each other and pronounce our commitment to the protection and preservation of the natural world. Our program here at CODI is rooted in a community, community with a strong foundation in building the relationship that is rooted in dignity and respect. It's the very foundation of sustainable peace. This past winter, I wonder if, uh, if we can talk about winter in the past tense while we are still in April, uh, I guess it's called COVID. Uh, I have the unique privilege of learning, sharing, and generating knowledge for peace building and conflict transformation with my colleagues, friends, and participants. We explored the value of conflict analysis, studied the underlying cause of violence and war. We also discussed how to measure impact, not from the point of high-level bureaucratic evaluation or funder-oriented deliverables, but from the point of community, economic, political, and social uplift. Most importantly, we explore the, import, the importance of grassroots peace building that will have valuable impact on community, national, and international level peace building. When we come together and commit ourselves to peaceful living, we're acting responsibly to be in harmony with the natural world. Not by positioning ourselves at the top of the hierarchy, but as a small part of the natural world. We are excited, we are happy that our grassroots peace building course is completed, and we are happy also to share space with people from around the world. As we celebrate the successful completion of the first grassroots peace building course, I also would like to congratulate all of you who participated in the course, including those who helped facilitate the course. The only way to realize sustainable peace is for all of us to join hands and work together so that as we build peace from the bottom up, we can also challenge the structures of violence. Congratulations and thank you for your contribution and for your work. And we hope to see you next time.
Thank you. Just one minute. Okay. Um, with that, uh, recently I I come to uh, Ethiopia for personal reasons, uh, and when I was there, uh, I thought about our relationship with each other, our relationship with the community of Syrian and Tigrish, and uh, I thought about a group of people, particularly sisters of the Martha, who have committed themselves for lifelong peace, for lifelong relationship building, and lifelong peace building here in Antigonish, Nova Scotia, and elsewhere. And this program we have actually uh, launched this winter was a great support and a great moral and material support from Sisters of St. Martha. So I picked up something from Ethiopia. What I picked up was a basket, a basket that, uh, where is it? Uh, a basket which is usually made out of a grass. Uh, and the symbolism of the basket is that um, a basket is a communal concept where you can eat in a basket three, four, five people together, where you can share, where also you can appreciate and thank for those who uh, have grown the food, the farmers, people who made these things. And it's a constant relationship building reminder uh, in the basket. And, and that's why I picked up the basket. And I must confess that I have made a very futile attempt to make a bread yesterday and to put it in the basket. I hope it's edible. But um, on behalf of Cody Institute and on behalf of all of you who participated in this course, I would like to present this basket uh, with bread inside to Sister of St. Martha. Uh, and I invite um, Dr. Darlene O'Leary, who was the program uh, uh, director of program lead at the, at the Sisters of St. Martha to present this uh, to the Sisters of St. Martha community. Thank you very much, Thank Sisters you. of St. Martha. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm his wife also. <laughs> And uh, and I want to I'll accept this on behalf of the sisters who I work with, and uh, and I'll share my um, uh, I, their sincere congratulations to all of the graduates of the program. Um, what an achievement for you to be the first students of this this course, and to Degapi uh, for his first successful course here at Cody. Um, they really passed on their their love and appreciation and and. And congratulations to you all. So I will send this to them. <laughs> Thank you. Well, with that, we end our program for today. Uh, and the announcement we have is our next coffee house will be September 21st. We're taking a break, a summer break from coffee house. And uh, we will be posting information about our, the reason why we chose September um, 21st is September 21st is International Day of Peace. So we will come back uh, for that. And also what I, I forgot to mention today is today is International Day of um, uh, International Day for Multilateralism and Diplomacy for Peace. So we are celebrating our course ending while at the international level uh, United Nations and other agencies are focusing on multilateralism and diplomacy. And we hope uh, every conflict, every um, destructive violence could be addressed through multilateralism and diplomacy, not through guns and weapons and, and violence. And with that, uh, I thank you, uh, Sydney. I thank you, Jesse. Uh, Sydney and Jesse are graduate, just graduating from this Center of University here. Sydney is graduating with uh, international business degree. And Jesse is graduating with political science and history. We'll see you soon. We'll see you in September and uh, we'll come back and come back big. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.